So we have the microchip, and this is the FPGA solution right here. Uh, hi, hi. So who are you? I am Diptesh Nandi. I take care of the industrial vertical marketing for the FPGA BU. So um, this is a previously MicroSemi, which is part of Microchip now, yes. FPGA solution. What is this? Well, uh, what we are demonstrating over here is a splash kit. It is a limited feature set evaluation kit using which you can uh, evaluate various functions of our next generation, the current generation FPGA called Polar Fire. The demo that we are showing over here is essentially a deep learning demo. Uh, what we are trying to show is a tiny YOLO algorithm that is running on the Polar Fire FPGA. And the hardware platform that we are using is the Polar Fire Splash Kit. So um, you're doing a deep deep learning yeah. on the chip, yeah. and, but it's not a high power consumption, or right. So Polar Fire FPGAs or Micro Semi FPGAs traditionally have been known for their low power. Uh, we have flash-based FPGAs, and essentially what that enables us to do is to consume f up to 50% lower power than competitive FPGAs. So that advantage is also derived in a machine learning solution where we can run a machine learning algorithm up to two to four times better in terms of giga operations per second per watt uh, feature. So that sort of differentiates us uh, with other FPGAs that are available in the market. And we are essentially trying to uh, convey that, hey, we can do much better performance at a much lower power footprint. So that's Does that mean you also two or three times less per performance? No, it does not mean that we have we are, the best performance per watt. I have, we have the best performance uh, per watt, and that has also got to do with the uh, math block architecture that we have. So, in our math blocks, uh, which is an essential core feature for deep learning, we can do up to four operations per cycle. What it essentially translates is, we can do up to 25% higher efficient math blocks, and that enable that along with the low power consumption allows us to do two to four times. Uh, performance per uh, watt in terms of uh, FPGA acceleration of machine learning. And uh, uh, so, is the news here that uh, now it's available, or what's special right now at the embedded world? So there are two announcements that we are making. Uh, of course, Polar Fire has been in production since last year, end of last year. Uh, so we have Polar Fire 100, 200, and 300 parts that are available for order uh, entry. We are also launching another kit, a video development kit, and that is what we are showcasing in a different booth. And uh, is it around here? Yeah. Can so, we go? Yeah, we can go. Okay, so how far? Let's go. Just around the corner. Okay. Follow me. So uh, this, is a, this is a big, it looks like a bigger chip. It is not a bigger chip. It, the package of the uh, chip is slightly bigger. But so you can fit a heat sink on it or what? That's the value add that we bring across. We are telling to our customers that they do not need a heat sink. They do not need a fan because we are up to 50% lower power consumption uh, than any other FPGA. Uh, what we also support is very small form factor FPGAs, uh, up to 11 cross 11 mm packages. So what we're saying is that you can put our FPGAs into very small form factor cameras and since, anyways, in small form factor cameras, you won't have space required for heat sinks or fans, our FPGAs will give you the best performance. So what is this one doing? Uh, this one is a new kit that we are launching uh, in Embedded World. Uh, it has two image sensors that goes into an FPGA through a VPCSI2 interface. And we are using a HDMI display output to showcase uh, the display here in an external monitor. Now this kit is meant to be a complete system solution enabler for our embedded vision customers. Uh, we have additional features like FMC, FMC ports using which customers can uh, evaluate SDI, Ethernet, or USB connections. We have MIPI CSI transceive functions. We, we have display serial interfaces using which you can uh, connect to uh, touch screens. And we also have HDMI 2 ports 
which does not use any external fire. So you can, the polar fire can directly drive HDMI 2.0 solutions all in one chip. So essentially, for any vision customer, if you provide uh, this kind of a hardware platform, they will be able to uh, design and develop and evaluate polar fire's performance in such kind of applications. What is the market? What, what is, is this market? Uh, this market is spread across verticals. In the consumer segment, you have uh, camera manufacturers, frame grabber manufacturers. In the industrial market, you have industrial machine vision camera manufacturers and frame grabbers. In aerospace and defense, this can be uh, audio and AR or VR headset or a binocular uh, manufacturer. So this has application across verticals. This has applications across uh, different kind of applications. Yeah. And uh, there's an ARM logo on this. Uh, this ARM logo on the on the on the chip. So that means there's a, what kind of ARM is running here? So we have a soft core ARM uh, What's that we support. Soft core. Soft, soft core means the polar polar fire does not have a hard CPU, hard controller inside. So we run a soft core ARM Cortex M1 along with RISC V soft core. So we support both the different types of processors for M1? your design. M3 you mean, or? Uh, it's M1. M1? Yeah. Soft. soft. How does it run? Like just on the FPGA? Yeah, it runs on the FPGA, right? To do uh, whatever ARM uh, exactly. software you want. You can do whatever ARM software you want with ARM Cortex M. But yeah. then over there you're talking about a RISC-V implementation? Mm -hmm. So how, how is it going to be different? So, so, so we want to serve both set of customers. Now, the reason we have chosen to go along with RISC-V is because we have definite set of customers who want to evaluate the complete instruction set that RISC-V provides. Now, uh, if we partner with RISC-V, then they can do deep sensing of our instruction set and they can be absolutely assured that the instruction set they're getting is applicable for safety critical applications. Now there's other set of customers who develop very small core RISC-V, uh, they need very small core RISC-V implementations. They might not need extra features that ARM provides, but moving into a RISC-V, they can change the architecture without, have to pay, without having to pay a lot of architectural licensing fees. So that's the reason we are moving towards RISC-V as well. But, um, so it's about a license, but you're talking about soft implementation of the ARM, yeah, yeah. so you're going to do a soft implementation of the RISC-V too. It's not a hard? Uh, so this Polar Fire also supports soft RISC-V implementations. We have three cores available right now uh, with 32 IMA and data and cache support uh, with both the AXI bus and AHB, sub, uh, AHB bus interfaces. And all those three are part of our MI5, MI5 ecosystem and is offered free to our customers for evaluation. Yeah.